Check, check. This is Lima Control. Over? Okay, here we go. I think my mic is working. I was just practicing my, my someday being a, um, uh, a NASA program controller. So this is your uh, sports nutrition video number one for carbohydrates. I was just goofing around there. Carbohydrates is an interesting chapter to read if you have the book or have access to the book. Um, I've never told students to buy our book. I've, I've told students, I think, repeatedly, either rent the book or find it used. I don't know. I don't know where you get, I don't know where you can get used textbooks anymore. Beers, books, downtown sack is great. They're not, they're not cheap, but they have a good selection. I just don't know if they have um, the local community college, Sac State, UC Davis textbook selection that you'd be looking for. So hit or miss. Um, you know, kind of an overview of carbohydrates. It, the number one source for your carbohydrates in your diet as an athlete or a non-athlete will be plants. Does dairy have carbohydrates? Sure. Does animal tissue have carbohydrates? Yes. Unfortunately, when we kick, cook animal tissue, excuse me, when we cook animal tissue, we generally degrade whatever carbohydrates available in that animal tissue. That's part of the, the browning process of meat. Um, so you, you, you really look towards plants to provide the carbohydrates that we either use for energy or we use to keep our bowels regular dietary fiber. Um, plants use photosynthesis, they use, they use light, they take in CO2, and they're able to make really complex uh, molecules, which you remember from the second, mo second module, we go out of way to disassemble in the mitochondria using oxygen, where plants are assembling those glucose molecules, those fatty acid molecules, um, using carbon dioxide. Now, what do you use carbohydrates for? Number one, it's to run your, your nervous system, some of your organs, your brain. Those love carbohydrate. They're just, those are, those are organ, that's an organ system that loves carbohydrates. You can, you can run the brain off ketones on low carb diets. We call that ketosis, but the brain prefers carbohydrate. And, and you know this when you're, you have low blood sugar, you feel tired, you feel a little bit confused, a little dazed. Uh, you might have some like, uh, you know, some, some, you might feel off. Uh, you also use carbohydrates to burn fat. You know, the, the, the enzymatic pathways in muscle tissues that burn fat use a lot of carbohydrate metabolites. I just want to keep it as simple as possible. And, and the old adage used to be fat burns in the flame of carbohydrate. Okay. Um, if you try to go on a low carb diet and exercise, you know, ultimately you will need carbohydrate to burn fat. You could end up burning, not your muscles per se, but whatever you would use to build your muscles or maintain them in the blood. We call those amino acids. Those are the building blocks for muscle and protein in the body. You'd, you'd end up using that for fuel. So ideally for, especially for endurance athletes, soccer players, runners, cyclists, uh, football players, um, wrestlers, boxers, you have to eat carbohydrate. You really do. The amount that you eat is, is something that you titrate you figure out what's right for you. Maybe 65% of all your calories per day from carbohydrates, maybe that is too much, um, but you, you do need some. There's, there's no way around it. Um, uh, and, you know, this, the second slide kind of gets to that. Fat burns in the flame of carbohydrate. If you don't consume carbohydrate enough, like a very low carbohydrate diet, that puts the body into something called ketosis. And what ketosis actually is, is breaking body fat, not just to feed the body fat as a fuel, but you can actually break fat down into small molecules called ketones. The brain will accept ketones as a fuel. They're just kind of a cheap fuel. Uh, and so what it'll end up doing is, <clears throat> excuse me, my voice is a little scratchy. You will use some protein in the body, convert that to glucose to feed the brain, use some fat, convert that to ketones and feed the brain. So you, you, you feed the brain like this flex fuel of ketones and carbohydrates made from protein. Um, you know when you're ketosis because ketones are very smelly. They will come off your breath, they'll come off your skin and they have like a fruity smell. Uh, acetone is a ketone. Acetone is that active ingredient in fingernail polish remover. And if anyone opens a bottle of fingernail polish remover, the whole house will smell. That's how powerful ketones are in terms of um, your, your bodily smells in your breath. Okay. Uh, 
So there are two kinds of carbohydrates that people eat, and this will be the last slide for this video set. You can either eat simple carbohydrates, and those are just single molecules, just, just one Lego. We call those monosaccharides. Hint, glucose, blood sugar, is a monosaccharide. You can eat those, or you can eat disaccharides. Now, disaccharides are two sugar molecules. Imagine you took a red Lego and a blue Lego and you stuck them together. That's a disaccharide. Table sugar is called sucrose. You know, the, the stuff you spoon into tea and coffee. Sucrose is actually not a sugar molecule. It's a disaccharide. It's actually made of two baby molecules, which I'll discuss in the next video. Or you can eat complex carbohydrates. So not one or two, but three or more. For most of the foods we eat, <clears throat> excuse me, in the, in the human diet, we're either consuming one or two sugars and not four, five, and six, but more like 100, 200, 300. Those are the polysaccharides. Starch, which we find in things like potatoes and pasta and, and rice and, and, and bread. Uh, and that's breakable. That's a breakable carbohydrate that provides energy. That's in plant material. Fiber, which is made of the same sugars in plant material. They're just unbreakable. In theory, if you ate wood or paper, and had the enzymes to break the fiber in the wood and paper, wood and paper would be a, a, a fuel source. We just can't break those bonds. So starch and fiber is in plants. Humans and mammals take in sugars, break them down, and we store them as a starch equivalent in our own tissues. We call that glycogen. So glycogen is found in liver tissues, liver cells, and muscle cells. Starch is a polysaccharide in plants. Fiber is a polysaccharide in plants. Glycogen is a polysaccharide in bodily tissues, primarily for us, muscle and liver.